<laughs> yes, he's got some beans. Welcome back guys, welcome back. Another day, another electronic drama. So today I've got a rather sick scooter. So this is the bodgest scooter that they sent me and um, I've blown it up basically and it won't work anymore. The reason why I think it blew up is because <laughs> I tried to um, charge it using my cycle satiator charger, which should be fine, should, should work absolutely fine. But what happened was I shoved this connector in to the um, to the power socket, it's exactly the right connector, and there was a huge spark, and my hand got covered in molten connector, and you can see it's actually pretty ruined, the end of that. Yeah, I don't know what happened, I think it might be the type of plug, and it might have just caught it at the wrong an angle, and it just shorted out completely. Some of them have got like a ring around the outside, and it's kind of exposed, a bit like this. This isn't a power socket, but it kind of looks like that. And I think that's a bad idea, basically, because, I wasn't really doing anything out of the box and it, it just basically exploded. So long story short, it don't work anymore at all. The controller must have fried um, in the whole debacle. So the plan today is to fit a phase runner controller to it. Not only will that make it work again, it also should make it ridiculously quick and probably burn out the motor. So we've got a phase runner controller here. Um, it was used on another bike, but I've just whipped it off because these all have all got connectors on so you can basically just chop them between um, rides if that's what you want to do or just buy one for each bike um, anyway so yeah this has got the harness built in so you can see here we've got phase wires and hall sensors on that socket there and all we've really got to do is just splice it into here um, but obviously we need to work out which one of which things do what on here there'll be some things that won't be used because obviously this has got a screen on it um, it's also got a headlight on the front of it um, we'll figure out what to do with all of that after, but basically I want to get this wheel turning. This is a hub motor, so it's going to be easy to interface to this controller because if you look here, you've got a blue, green and yellow wire. Those are the motor phase wires and then coming from the motor cable itself, you can actually see it's got hall sensors on here as well. So really all we're talking about is those three and those six cables in there um, those are the ones we're most interested in because that's the ones for those are the ones for the motor right so I've basically simplified things ripped the controller out and um, so now we've got we can clearly see we've got these little bullet connectors on phase wires hall sensors that's the motor this looks to me like throttle on that side and then e-brake on there so that will probably be the brake levers switch so when you pull the lever in that will close that circuit so you can actually hook up regen on this i'm not going to do it just yet i'm going to get it working first um, and then there's other wires things like i think this is the light basically and this here is actually taken off of the charge port so your battery effectively the actual charging part of the battery plugs into there and then this wire is taking voltage from the charge port and that was going to the DC to DC converter which turns 48 volts down to 12, presumably to run that light at the front. We're not gonna worry about that, we'll just stick those aside. So all we're really worried about is motor and throttle. So in order to do that, we are gonna to have to do a bit of soldering um, because that connector is not gonna fit those three wires. And this connector here, which has got six wires, doesn't fit that, so I'm gonna to have to splice those two together. Um, yeah, it is what it is. Right, so we've got it all wired up. We've got the phase wires, we've got the hall sensors, and I've started to do the throttle as well. So basically the throttle connector on the phase runner is a plug and there was a plug already on the end of this. So I just spliced on a connector by cutting the connector off of the old controller. So we've actually got a socket there and obviously the plug there. So that will go into there nicely. So all we've got to do is connect phase connectors, the three phase connectors there on that big connector. Um, and then we've got the holes as well. You can see it's labeled hole on there. Click that into there. And then we have 
our throttle as well. So connect the throttle up. Now this might not work. Um, the throttle wires might need to be um, adjusted, but at least we can basically plug in um, the battery and you know see what see what's actually happening. I'm also going to need to plug in a laptop as well so that I can um, program this controller. But we should be able to plug in the battery. Now you're going to get a spark here, which is not ideal, but um, you'll probably hear an arc or a crack when I plug this in. It's not really great, but there's not really any way around it. No, there wasn't actually. So yeah, you can see it's on. Try the throttle, nothing happening there. So we need to get the laptop out to figure out what, what is actually going on. Right, so I've got it working. I, I had to use another throttle because I can't figure out what's going on with this throttle connection over here. Um, it should just be straightforward, but I, I don't know, it goes into this big loom here and I can't work out what was what, so I've just basically just used another throttle because life's too short. Anyway, it's got plenty of power. I've configured it. At the moment it's running about 1,000 watts, 1,150. Um, I'm using a different battery pack as well, which is slightly more high power than the other one that was in it. I don't know if it's gonna fit in this hole though, but this one is capable of a couple of thousand watts. So, um, but we've only got a 25 amp fuse on here, so I've, I've kind of pushed it up to pushed it up to as far as I can. But given this scooter was 500 watts before, I think double the power should probably make quite a bit of difference. So next thing's next, stick it back together, I suppose. Finally, got it back together. Um, bit of a mission. Um, the battery is a little bit too big, so <laughs> you can see it bulging out the bottom. Um, there, so I'm gonna have to work out something for that. Actually, if you get these screws in, you can kind of clamp it in, but um, the waterproofness has probably gone now, so I'm gonna have to um, work that out. But it's all back together and it works. So let's go and test it out, see what it does. <laughs> yes, it's got some beans. Good to have this one back. So yeah, impressive actually. I mean, it was broken, so there's no way you know I could have used it. So just by putting a phase runner on it has made it work. Um, I think there's some more we can do. Basically, this battery's got a 25 amp fuse in it. I've only pushed it up to 25 amps, which is not a lot at all. So I think next I'm going to try just increasing the current on this on the phase runner. Just reprogram it. Um, stick some more current on it and we'll see what happens. <laughs> yes. So, next day now and some stuff's turned up. So what I've got here, I've got some fuses. So these are the fuses that are used in the battery that I'm using. They're mini blade fuses, They're basically car fuses, but like the small ones, the mini fuses. So I've managed to get 35 amp on next day delivery, which should give it enough, about 1700 watts that'll be, um, you know, peak on that. So I think this will be, this will make a lot of difference. After all, that motor is only a 500 watt motor. <laughs> so we better not be like pinning it for long periods of time, but just for like quick acceleration bursts, it should be absolutely fine. And also I've got a couple of different on and off switches which will mount on the handlebars because obviously we've lost the ability to properly turn it on and off. Um, the phase runner controller has an on and off feature, but you need to wire it up. So that's what these switches are for. I think this is the one I need because it should have been the one that pushes in and then pushes out rather than the momentary which is what you don't want. So let's get cracking then. Right, mostly done. I've got the um, power switch connected. You can see this on off switch. Obviously throttle's done. I've also got a nice little charge port here, which, you flip, which flips out um, like an Anderson style connector, fits nicely in there. Now I'm gonna up the power. Right guys, she's ready. So yeah, got the power switch on there. Um, throttle's obviously on there. It's all installed, all nicely back together. Who would even know? It's not a standard one. Um, it's on charge at the moment. Charging by the cycle satiator. It's at 50.6 volts at the moment. Chucking five amps in there. So yeah, it should be ready soon. Really went 
going down a hole. <laughs> yeah, so it's quick. It is quick. The thing with the phase runner is once it gets going, because you've got flux weakening, which enables higher top speed um, for the same voltage, it really starts moving like a train. Like there is not a lot that's going to stop it. So overall, I'm really happy. I mean, it's transformed this little vehicle. Obviously it wasn't working, so I've got it going again by using the phase runner. So if you do find yourself in a pickle with a controller, rather than buying some cheap crap from China, you could probably actually just get a phase runner and transform your vehicle. Throttle, the throttle's smoother. Um, you've got more torque, higher top end. I mean, everything's great about it. The motor actually is handling the sort of 1300 watts that we were putting through it, no problem at all. It's still warm from the run, but it wasn't getting excessively hot, I wouldn't say, because you've got a nice bit of airflow going over there, remember? Um, it's just when you stop, you notice that it kind of raises up. If you were to do three miles uphill, I think you probably would find yourself with an overheating problem. Or if you run a couple of thousand watts, then you might find um, that issue as well. I will be swapping the fuse for a 50 amp so I can push the maximum that this controller can put out, which is usually around two and a half thousand to three thousand watts. That would be quite interesting. But until then, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next one, guys.